Well, good morning everyone and welcome to the Kingdom Faith Outdoors channel. My name is Miguel Fuentes and I am the uh, minister and also a professional angler or professional fisherman uh, here at this channel. And uh, today we're, we're going to get into a topical sermon that I really, you know, that, that, that I really like. Uh, the sermon title of this message is "Worship the Creator." Worship the Creator, and we and we'll be taking a look at uh, Romans chapter one, verses twenty-four through twenty-six. If you got your Bibles with you, uh, get get to, uh, get ready with your Bibles, and um, let's dive into Scripture before we. But before we get started, let's go ahead and pray first. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we uh, come to you with our hearts humbled, and um, Lord, we Lord, we come to you, Lord, with with all honesty and with all humbleness. Father, help us, Lord, to walk in your ways according to your, according to your word. Father, please forgive us of our sins. Lord, we confess our sins unto you. Lord, we ask for your forgiveness. Wash us clean by your blood. And, um, and help us, Lord, to walk in righteousness and holiness according to your word. We thank you, Lord, for, for your creation. We thank you, Lord, that you created all things according to your glory. And we thank you, Lord. We praise you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Romans chapter 1, verses 24 to 26. I'm reading out of the King James Version. And then I'll be reading it again with a different translation. Just to be able to understand. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust. Actually, let me read 24. <clears throat> let me start over with this. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and read verse 18 and all the way down to verse 32 just to make it more context. <clears throat> For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and all unrighteousness of men. Who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known on God is manifest in them. For God has showed it up uh, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse because that when they knew God they glorified him not as God neither were thankful but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into the into an image made like to a corruptible man, and to birds or four footed beasts and creepy things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own heart. To dishonor their own body between themselves. Who changed the truth of God into a lie. And worship and serve the creation more than the creator. Who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up into vanity afflictions. For even the woman did not change the natural use into that which is against nature. 
Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burn in their lusts one towards another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompassion of their errors which was meant um, meet. meet. <clears throat> And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave themselves over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not confidential. Like I said, I write, um, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, miseness, Full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, mentally whispers, backbiters, haters of God, disgraceful, pride, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to, to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without, without natural affliction, impraceable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which that which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So the whole the whole what Paul is saying God's wrath on the unrighteousness. But as we focus on verses 24 through 26, we see that Paul is trying to, un try trying to warn believers in Rome that these things are, 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 are you know, the, all, all the unrighteousness and the wickedness and all these things are not of God. And so we, we got to understand uh, through this context is that it's a it is by the grace of God that we must know the truth and that we are children of God and we should not be doing these things and in verse verse uh, 24 or 25 rather uh, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the create the cre uh the creatures more than the creator. Um, this is a very interesting phrase what Paul uses. Now we know for a fact that through creation God created all things from trees, from plants, from animals, from insects, from reptiles, from amphibians, from uh, you know mammals and fish and all these things all for the glory of God it's never meant to be worship at all so Paul understands the need for the truth is that people have a lack of truth because they are living in sin they are living in wickedness they are living in, in unrighteousness they 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 they're fornicating like crazy. They they co they covetousness. They for envy. They they murder. They debate theolog uh, theological discussions that doesn't need to be discussed. Amen. And so I you know we 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 got too distracted from the truth because we always debate. The word of God. We're always debating uh, and, and dividing the body of Christ for their beliefs, which you know Christ has never intended us to be so divisive as of today. And we see, and we see through the history of the early church and through, through the church history. In general, we have been so divisive among ourselves that we don't see the truth at all. 
And so, and so God is, is trying to waking us up to to go to, to to go and preach the gospel to the lost. They need to hear that the wrath of God is on them. And, and you know the Bible says that the, the the judgment of God begins at the house of God. And and we need to be examining ourselves. Are we in the faith? Are we are we loving one another as Christ commands us to do? And we see in in John chapter seventeen, Jesus prayed. You know, I pray. That they will see the love of God through them because they love one another. Which I'm paraphrasing it. And you can you can go read uh John chapter 17, uh the final prayer of of Jesus. People fall into the worship of creation. God does not want us to, to worship the creation. Leave the trees alone. Leave the leave the animals alone, you know. We we worship the God who created all these things. You know, as a as a um, outdoorsman or a fisherman, I always go out in nature. And I and I'm and I'm uh, in awe of His creation. I see I see owls hooting. Uh, in the distance or nearby, uh, I've seen a lot of birds flying in and out of trees. Uh, you know, I catch big catfish. You know, uh, recently, right now, a lot of big catfish in these creeks. I tell you, uh, even small ones like bluegills or I call a uh, pumpkin seed uh, sunfish. Uh, one time, it's a very beautiful look. I got pictures to show you how big they are on the ultralight. Uh, just to show you an example, see, very big fish that I caught, and I give God praise for He created that creature so that I can observe them, so that I can look at it and 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 give God praise and glory. But I don't worship the fish. I don't worship the birds. I don't worship the plants. You know, I don't worship food, you know, like fruits and veggies. No. Fruits and veggies are good for me because it brings nutrition in my body. Now, I don't eat fish. Fish are a very good uh, source of protein. So that we can, um, so that we can have you know, nutrition. Uh, and the purpose of his creation is is to point to the Creator. Now I know some people will say, "Well, you're 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 uh, mis mis uh, interpreting the scriptures here." No, no. Paul made it clear that we all should be worshiping God. Not and not the creatures and not the creation. Last point I want to make is that God allow us to go, God allow us to go astray to teach us a lesson. Meaning, you know, if we slip back so far enough, God will turn turn it over to us and and lead us astray. To the point where, where there is no point of return. And we see this in verse 24. Who is, well, wherefore God always gives themselves up to uncleanness through the lust of their own heart. To dishonor their own body between themselves. Meaning God gave them to uncleanness through the eyes of their own heart. Lustful hearts. That's very, very interesting. Because I thought the Holy Spirit should be convicting us to repent of our sins. But if we ignore the Holy Spirit, 
conviction in our lives, then God will hand it over, hand over that sin to us, and make us go astray and astray and astray until, 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 until we realize that man, I messed up. I'm broken. And we repent of that sin. And we confess our sins unto the Lord. And ask, Lord, ask the Lord for, for forgiveness. And I can tell you this. Not only he will give you a lesson. But by his blood. Cleanse. Of all unrighteousness. Not only that he chastise you. To not go astray from his word. God allow us to see. Why we need him in the first place. As, as in verse uh, 28 says. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. A reprobate mind. And so that, that's, that's incredible. How, how, how God use his word to to really make sense of what he is trying to do in our lives see god can't let let you go if you continue in your sin but there will be a time of grace that god will wake you up and that this is not right what have I, what have i done if we repent of our sins, if we turn back to God, and God will give you that lesson, not not to be astray. We see we see the story of the prodigal son. The prodigal son went away, feeding feeding the you know the family was so bad, he had he he had to eat the pig's meal. And he, and he realizes that, man, I messed up. You know, I'll, you know, it's time for me to return to my father. And and you know the story. Once that prodigal son came back home, his father saw him. He ran and embraced him. He celebrated with the cutting out of fatted calves and put on special robes and all that stuff and and the beauty of that is 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 so 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 powerful if you understand the 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 parable of the prodigal son you know God allowed us to see things. Differently. Worship God rather than the creation. And I'll close with this. Don't fall into the trap of going astray to the point of no return. Continue, continue to walk with God on a daily basis. Don't lose your sight of the eternal life that God has given you. Sometimes, some, yeah, sometimes we do slip up, but we, but we confess our sins, and we repent of our sins, and, and you know, and, and let the Lord cleanse you with his blood. Have mercy on my soul, Lord. I have fallen. Please forgive me, Lord. So that's all I got for today, folks. I hope you enjoy the sermon as I am. And um, yeah, so there will be some videos coming up soon. And um, yeah. Um, and um, yeah, so there's some videos going to be coming up soon. And. Um, yeah, so may God bless you, may God keep you, I'll see you guys again next time.